Pay attention to my right thumb. You can see that I am not touching the stick on my gamepad at all, yet I am able to control camera regardless. This is gyroscope ratcheting in action. A common gamepad setup using gyroscope consists of stick for wide camera panning and gyroscope for aiming. In this setup, gyroscope control is always on and because of how we hold our controller, the range of motion is limited to half sphere, thus the need for stick to expand the horizontal reach. Gyroscope ratcheting eliminates the need for analog stick by borrowing a mechanism from something that many video game players are familiar with, the mouse. You probably knew how a computer mouse work. In order to move your pointer to a destination, you move your mouse toward desired direction. If the pointer has yet to arrive but your physical mouse goes out of bound, you lift the mouse, reset it then move it again. This principle is carried over to ratcheting with the difference being, the act of lifting your mouse is now instead pressing a button to modify your gyroscope's behavior in the hold press manner. For this, there's two ways to implement it. The first way is setting gyroscope to be on by default with the modifier button bound to gyro deactivating, or, hold off, setup. The other way is gyro being off by default with modifier bound to activating gyro, called, hold on, setup. Because of the repeating rotary motion that resembles how we use a ratchet, the name was applied for this method. But which button should be used for modifying gyro? You probably ask. Well, just about anything will do face buttons, trigger and shoulder buttons, touchpad, extension inputs on the back or the side of your controller. Even an external device is acceptable if you can get it working for the setup. So long it doesn't compromise your ability to perform other actions, it's all fair game. Choosing which buttons to use in the setup is entirely up to personal preference. Be aware that certain setup might not work well. For example, if you decide to use analog trigger in a dual state setup, in which any percentage of the trigger pull will modify gyro while a full pull will fire off native trigger action, hold off setup will render gyroscope ineffective in the context of shooter game. The advantage of using mouse in FPS isn't just hitting your target accurately. You can also turn around swiftly and precisely where you want to. The same thing can also be done with gyro ratcheting. You might think that action game, where melee combats mostly occurs, has no need for gyro, but let's take a look at this. In this footage, I am using right shoulder button to activate gyroscope and I have remapped right stick to do what D-pad does in this game, switching weapons and equipment. I now have the ability to simultaneously move my character, pan camera and perform any of these actions, attack, jump, use items or switch weapons. I can even keep track of my enemy without relying on the lock-on function the game offers to the player. This allows me to improve my situation awareness and maintain gameplay momentum. There's less cheap death or damage because I'm not leaving camera to do its own thing. I am actively controlling it using my wrist while my thumb can commit to face buttons. With the stick no longer needed for camera control, it can be repurposed for other uses. If you break down stick input into four directions and bind each of them to an action, you are practically trading one input, the one that was cleared for gyro modifier, for four more inputs. It's easy for gyro ratcheting to adapt in any game. Bind gyroscope to your cursor or camera, pick an input to use as gyro modifier and that's it, you're ready to go, no needs to wait for game developers to implement native gyro support in their games. Gyroscope ratcheting is not without some downsides, however. Even though this method closely resembles using a mouse, longtime keyboard and mouse players may find themselves on a learning curve when trying to adopt it, and sole gamepad players may find themselves spending more time doing so. A common issue that gyroscope users often find is that every button press will cause some degree of tremors and shakiness, which negatively affects one's aiming ability. Ratcheting has a dilemma in which, it needs to be on higher sensitivity setting for 180 degrees turn to not requires too much movement of your wrists and arms, but higher sensitivity introduces more shakiness as it registers noises from movement a lot easier. Lower sensitivity setting results more stability, but it requires your arm to extend further to achieve 180 degrees turn. Fortunately, 
The problem with shaky camera can be somewhat remedied by including pointer smoothing as a passive solution, or having a dedicated button to dampen sensitivity as an active solution, should you have spare inputs of course. The best setting is the one where one achieve a balance of fast camera speed and aiming stability, with extra rotation that extends beyond 180 degrees taken into account. And that's all for this video, thank you for watching. If you have any question, feel free to ask. You can also share your personal ratcheting configs you're using.